My name is Alexander Hesketh, and I'm the sponsor and constructor of the Hesketh 308 Grand Prix car, which will be entirely British for the British driver that I hope will one day win the World Championship. It's been 50 years since you launched Hesketh Racing. And my first question has to be, why? Why motorsport? Why Formula One? Well, I blame Bubbles because um, I met him at a wedding. I then sold him a car. And actually, it was a terrible deal because I finished up with him selling me a racing team. Bubbles was just going to have a bit of a go. He'd done F3 racing with his, all the guys who were friends of his, like... Pierce Courage, Frank Williams, and also Jochen Rint was there. I mean, there were, there were a whole crew of them, and they went racing around Europe, and I was introduced to this guy, James Hunt. I'd never heard of him. Why did you come and work for Lord Hesketh? Um, <laughs> I was out of a job, and he was the only person who'd have me. <laughs> Bubbles made himself the team manager. James Hunt became the driver, and the next time I saw him was here at Silverstone in an F3 race in the wet, where he took the lead for about half a nano second before crashing in front of my feet into the old pit wall that used to be there in those days. I don't think I ever saw another F3 race, but what happened was that Max Mosley hadn't paid James when he was driving for March. Typical of Max, getting money out of him was like extracting water from the motor dam. James did a deal, which was he got a 71 Formula 2 chassis out of him. And they went off to the Gold Cup at Elton Park, which was the last big F2 race of the yep. season in those days. And the running order at the front of that race was Ronnie Peterson, Nicky Lauda and James Hunt. Well, and Ronnie and Nicky were both in new works cars and James was in a rather rougher version. So at that moment, I suddenly began to take a great interest in James Hunt's future. What did you see as his true strengths as a driver? Firstly, he was very quick. I know that sounds very trite, but it's also true. The second and, and nearly as important feature was that he and Harvey, the chief engineer, had a true understanding of each other. If there is a sort of symbiotic relationship, there is no question that it does pay dividends. He was also quite an emotional character, wasn't he? He really was passionate about his motor racing. Well, I like that. Unfortunately, the marshals weren't aware of the depth of his resolve. So in 72, he went through Formula 3 with Bubbles and James, F2 with James, and within yeah. a year, you had a Formula 1 team. I said to Bubbles, this is expensive. Do we want to stay having our noses rubbed in it, or do we want to get out? The only place we could go to was F1. So uh, we went and rented an F1 new March chassis. I bought two new DFVs, three Hewland boxes, eight sets of wheels, and the whole lot fitted in the back of a Bedford TK two axle transporter. And we set off for Monaco. With characteristic panache, Hesketh chose to launch his F1 team at the Monaco Grand Prix, the most glamorous, high profile event in the entire F1 calendar. We qualified, so we were absolutely over the moon by that, and we were running six at the end of the race, and then something went wrong in the last three laps, and we were classified ninth, which again we saw was a huge success. Yeah. We were celebrating more in ninth than the winner was. They clearly thought we were mad. Um, and we went to the next race, which was the French Grand Prix, and we came sixth. We got our first World Championship points. And I'm sure you celebrated. You were very we famous for your celebrations. We certainly I did. <laughs> I think we did. I think I just vaguely recall sort of hazy morning somewhere on the back of Cannes. I think we always had an advantage that the other, other teams didn't take us seriously. There was a principle, which is that we were rather irresponsible, rather too young. You have to accept the fact when you work for Alexander that you become one of the family. And therefore, as he's the father of the family, this is his, this is his attitude, um, he, will, he will encroach into you in more ways than just one what she does an employer. Don't mind, build nine new cars, but let's have one of them You were 22 at that point? 21. 21. Yeah. And we were seen as outsiders, and that, that's what happens. But you hit back with a podium in your fourth, was it your fourth race? We were on the podium at Zandvoort. Yeah. The fact that people 
were fairly snooty about us was the biggest driver for us as a team. It made us work harder. To move forward to the 75 season, the one memory that I'm sure sticks in, well, I think for, for all of us with Hesketh Racing is the Dutch Grand Prix. What memories do you have of that weekend crossing the finish line first? I remember it very well because it was, it was strange. The weather was perfect. It was absolutely blue, blue, blue. Friday practice, Saturday practice. Sunday morning, whoa, black. Complete change. Rain pouring down. All the other teams rushed out. A lot of adjustments were made and all the rest of it. And we all stood around and said, well, what are we going to do? And James and looked up and we said, well, the best thing is we know the car works like this. And far, far out in the North Sea, there was a very thin, pale line in the weather. So we took it and said, well, the weather might get better. It's softening up a bit here. And so we left the car as it was qualified on a dry track. When the race started, the rain had jolly nearly stopped. At the start, Schechter seized the advantage over Regazzoni and grabbed second place behind Lauder. Out on the track, the spray was not as bad, and the field was able to stay close to the leaders without driving blind. We came in lap six, seven or something, and he went out on dry tyres, and there was a dry line. After a couple of slips, he didn't come off, and the track started to dry. Lauda was among the last to change. He stayed out for a further seven laps after James Hunt had been the first driver to peel off into the pits. The British driver's decision had been a masterstroke. He found himself in the lead. The last 36 laps were a nightmare because it was just a blob of white, and that was James coming out, and then boom, boom, two red blobs, and they got closer and closer and closer. And we were saved by the wing setting because the one thing, the extra 25 horsepower they had just wasn't enough to make up for the extra drag that they cranked up on their wing. Yeah, for the wet. So he was coming right under James' tail, and James just, he toughed it out and just refused to let him in. So are you saying that you beat Ferrari on strategy? No, I think <laughs> we beat Ferrari on a combination of good fortune, good luck, and taking a very reasonable risk. Lord Hesketh never made any secret of the fact that he was in racing for fun, and one thing was certain, plenty of champagne would flow in the team hotel that night. We're here at Zandvoort, the venue of Hesketh Racing's greatest triumph, 50 years on from when the team was launched. I get the chance to drive James Hunt's car that won the Zandvoort Dutch Grand Prix. Lord Hesketh, Bubbles and James, they looked like they had a lot of fun, but when it came to racing, they were very serious. It still blows my mind that they raced these cars around this circuit when it was a lot narrower as well. Having the opportunity to drive James Hunt's winning car around Zandvoort, the only victory for a Hesketh is pretty exceptional. It's so exposed, I feel like I'm still on top of the car. To think that James took this to victory around here in slick conditions being chased by two Ferraris blows my mind, it really does. Oh, listen to that engine. For me, this was such an epic time in Formula One. A team like Heskins could take it to the big boys. Not very often, but they could take it to the big boys. In only their third year of racing in motorsport. James Hunt, you were a superhero to drive this thing around here. I know you were brave, you boys, back in the 70s, but uh, wow. Very, very special. Fair play. It's a very, very different sport back then. It did take me back to the time when James was leading the race around here, and it was also really tough conditions. It wasn't a straightforward race, it was wet drying and he felt brave enough to go on slicks early and it worked for him to see the celebrations of him on the podium the first real celebration he had on a podium was spectacular <laughs>